And another thing that nobody can really explain is why the Holocene started. It's fairly clear that the Earth warmed rapidly around 15,000 years ago, going up possibly as much as 16 degrees in just a couple of decades. But we don't know why. Some people say, oh, well, there was a huge carbon burp from the sea, maybe. Just a whole bunch of carbon dioxide was locked away, and then as the Earth warmed, it was released and caused the Earth to warm. Which isn't just a circular explanation. It's a highly unsatisfactory one because we know that there's been this pattern of glaciations and interglacials. And unless you believe that the sea burps carbon dioxide in huge bubbles on a fairly regular schedule, evoking it to explain the end of the last one is to fly in the face of the fact that the problem we're trying to explain is why a whole bunch of them started and ended. Again, there's a kind of obsession with carbon dioxide that makes it the explanation even when, as an explanation, it's totally inadequate to the thing we're trying to explain. One of the interesting theories about the uh, uh, end of the last ice age was that um, if you look at the ice cores that we talked about, they became extremely dusty. And so the implication was there was lots of deserts all over the Earth at, at the peak of the last ice age, the last glacial maximum. And one theory, it's due to uh, Ralph Ellis, a Canadian, is that maybe what happened was that many plants at high altitudes and edges of deserts simply died from carbon dioxide starvation. And, and the dust then provided the end of the ice age because it blackened the snow and the ice so much that the little bit of extra sunlight that came at the next optimum phase for the Milankovitch cycle you know, when the, you get maximum sunlight in the northern hemisphere summer, uh, was now, the, the ice was now black and, and the snow was black, so it was easier to melt. And so you got a runaway end of the last ice age. And if CO2 has not been driving temperature over a period of half a billion years, it's very strange to think that it suddenly started doing so in 1970. And yet fundamentally, that is the claim of the alarmists. Now, occasionally, to be fair, they will try to go back further and make the argument that CO2 has been driving temperature for a longer period. But when they do so, they make a mess of it. Particularly Al Gore, in his film, where he produces a chart over almost the last million years that was such scientific jiggery-pokery that a British court ruled that his film couldn't be shown in schools without a corrective on this point. That's the second and third ice age back, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh ice age back. Now, an important point. In all of this time, 650,000 years, the CO2 level has never gone above 300 parts per million. Now, as I said, they can also measure temperature. Here's what the temperature has been on our Earth. Now, one thing that kind of jumps out at you is well, let me put it this way. If my classmate from the sixth grade that talked about uh, Africa and South America were here, he would say, did they ever fit together? <laughs> Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But they did, of course. And the, the relationship is actually very complicated, but there is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others, and it is this. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer because it traps more heat from the sun inside. Gore shows a fairly close correlation between CO2 and temperature, but what he doesn't show you is that temperature moves first. That's right, you heard me. Temperature moves first. The mechanism that operates here, at least on the fairly small scale, appears to be that as the Earth warms, more CO2 is released from all its natural sinks both decaying vegetation, which decays faster, and from oceans, which as they warm, release rather than absorbing CO2. And as the Earth cools, more CO2 is absorbed. It's still happening today, as the New York Times admitted in a story about the fact that an El Nino warming the oceans had led to a rapid rise in greenhouse gases, although the piece seemed mostly concerned with flaying the Trump administration for its failure to blame this phenomenon primarily on people. Rather than discussing how little we know about ocean currents, which we cannot model or predict satisfactorily, 
despite their importance to climate.